Greetings and salutations everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my week 5 tight end starter sets for the 2019 fantasy football season. On today's episode we're going to be going over matchups at the tight end position and then we're going to be going over my tight end ones, my top 12 tight end rankings on the week. Before we get into today's video let me remind all of you and let me thank all of you for helping us get to that 10,000 subscriber mark. It's absolutely incredible but for those of you who haven't yet already click that subscribe button. Get past Stephon Gilmore, hit him with a slant route with that cursor, hit him with a nine route, a post corner, doesn't matter. Click that subscribe button, join the community. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, and also don't forget to click that bell notification button to be up to date on all of my latest content and make sure you do click that like button because I very do much so appreciate it. Hey guys, how's it going? All right guys, so second video on the day, we're talking about the tight end position, my top 12 tight end rankings. Before we get into that, let me um, let's just talk about matchups, shall we? Because this, this is typically the shorter video of the week, and there really isn't anything that we need to talk about. Really, tight ends are often matchup proof, and even when they're not, we have to play them at the anyway. So the number one thing I wanted to mention is the Arizona Cardinals. Who do they play? They play against the Cincinnati Bengals. Who is the tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals? It is Tyler Eifert. He is on the page. That's all that I wanted to mention. He is probably going to score. There, I mean, the amount of points that this team has given up to opposing tight ends, on average, they gave up 8 receptions, 107 receiving yards, and 1.5 touchdowns to opposing tight ends. It's absolutely ridiculous how bad the Arizona Cardinals have been against that position, uh, and it's something that we need to take into account. That's why Tyler Eifert is on the page. I needed to address that. He is a guy that, if you are struggling to find a tight end, is an absolute steal of a pickup this week in play. Um... Uh, I trust him. I trust him because of how many targets he got last week in the red zone and how bad that defense is, especially against the tight end position. Other than that, in terms of matchups, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers giving up a lot of points. We saw Gerald Everett do a pretty good number on them last week. There's a you know there's always a potential that we could see Jared Cook finally make us you know a surge this season and put something together uh, and find himself with a pretty good fantasy number. Is that a possibility? I think if this is a shootout like I expect it to be, that you know Jared Cook could contribute. Uh, also, the Indianapolis Colts, another one of these teams giving up a lot of points. They get to take on Travis Kelsey. Good luck with that. Other than that, these are the matchups. These are how many points in half PPR defenses are giving to opposing tight ends on a weekly basis on average. Just wanted to go over this. Really, um, the top 12 tight ends are typically on a consistent basis the same guys. So really, no matter the matchup, we're still playing these guys. I just really wanted to go ahead and mention um, guys like Tyler Eifert and Jared Cook because they're not going to be too much. Uh, they're not going to be highlighted on today's episode, but I just wanted to go ahead and mention them uh, before we got into anything. All right, here we go. So like I mentioned, Tyler Eifert's right here. Oh, no, no, he's right there. Yeah, he's right there. And... Um, even though he's not on my top 12, I, I, I do think that he is a pretty good play this week. All right, moving on. Let's talk about my top 12 tight ends on the week, starting with number one, Travis Kelsey. Uh, he's the best tight end in the NFL. Hopefully, they can get him in the end zone. That's really what he's been lacking as of late. He cannot find work in the end zone. This offense did struggle last week, and the fact that Patrick Mahomes did not throw any touchdowns did hurt Travis Kelsey. Hopefully, he can get back on track this week. I really do believe that you know he is the best tight end in the NFL. Has to be started every week, so there's no more you know reason to talk about him. Fantastic matchup. Travis Kelsey is my number one. Moving on to number two, Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram has been the, if I'm not mistaken, has he been the, the best fantasy tight end thus far this season? I'm almost positive he has. I just want to go ahead and confirm this, so I'm not just, I'm almost, in half point PPR scoring formats. Evan Ingram is the number one tight end with 37 targets, 27 receptions, 331 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. Thus far, so good. Um, here's the thing. Even without Eli, Daniel Jones continues to target him. That's exactly what we want to see. As long as they're using Evan Ingram as a receiver and not so much as a tight end. You know that The tight end um, nomenclature can really just be, you know, be done with. These guys are receivers. Sometimes they have to block, sure, but so do other receivers. I, I really do believe a guy like Evan Ingram has surpassed that. He is a receiver on this team, uh, and he's one of the best. 
and he's one of the most targeted on his respective team. So going forward into this matchup against Minnesota, sure, it's not a great total matchup, but I do believe that because of the fact that Minnesota is so good against the run and will be able to lock down a guy like Sterling Shepard, um, you know, it's Daniel Jones, you know, prerogative to either feed Evan Ingram or potentially start feeding his new option, Golden Tate. Um, but I, I think Evan Ingram should be set for a pretty good week. He's my number two. Moving on to Mark Andrews, my number three. Practice today fully. Fantastic. Don't really have to worry about his foot injury this weekend. The last couple weeks, we've really had to walk on eggshells and hope that he wasn't too, truly hurt. Um, last week was fine. Got himself double-digit scoring points. Uh, this week against the Pittsburgh Steelers should have a you know a pretty decent matchup. Uh, the offense should be able to score and as one of the better tight ends thus far this season. Uh, you know, he's the number three tight end, only behind Austin Hooper by 0.6 points in half PPR. Um, because Austin Hooper's been a monster in the last two weeks. I really do think that Mark Ingram, uh, Mark Andrews, excuse me, uh, Mark Ingram's on the team, close enough. Uh, Mark Andrews should be fine this week uh, against the Steelers as my number three. Pretty confident in that. Um, that's why I have him there. All right, moving on to number four, we have Zach Ertz. Um, you know, Zach Ertz, I do believe that Dallas Goddard coming back should have helped him. But there was a play that in which um, <laughs> it was actually hilarious. On that Thursday night where Dallas Goddard did score a touchdown because uh, they ran two tight ends on one side. Um, Zach Ertz leaked out for like a drag route. And they had a tight end screen set up for Dallas Goddard that was wide open, walked right into the end zone. Unfortunate, but I do think that Zach Ertz continues to see a high target count um, with the pieces of like a Deshaun Jackson coming back, Dallas Goddard coming back, um, them implementing more pieces in this backfield. There are a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. That's really typically been the biggest struggle with um, the Eagles that we all anticipated this offseason. How many targets can a guy like Zach Ertz see, especially coming off of the season which he had the most receptions in tight end history in a single season? I do believe that you know he's not going to be able to live up to those numbers, but going forward, he is a consistent tight end. He consistently sees the ball because he is one of, if not the favorite target of uh, Carson Wentz in a good matchup. Uh, I like Zach Ertz. He's my number four. Moving on to number five, Will Disley. Speaking of tight ends that have been balling out as of late, Will Disley has been insane. Um, in the last three weeks, he has scored four touchdowns. Will Disley, I mean, five targets, seven targets, eight targets. The guy plays on the field more than the number two wide receiver. He played 79% of snaps last week when the number two wide receiver, who was Jerron Brown for the Seahawks, played like 56%. And obviously Tyler Lockett played 90%, but you know Will Disley is the number two wide receiver option of this team. Um, even though he's a tight end, the guy is seeing a lot of targets. Eight targets, seven receptions, 57 yards last week in a touchdown. Sure, it was against the Cardinals. Easy matchup. But I do believe that um, if they continue to implement him in this offense, no matter where you line him up, he is a talented enough receiving option to where he's going to work for this offense and... Uh, have himself another good week. Will Disley, for those of you who picked him up off waivers, should be very happy because uh, he's putting up some very good numbers, and I continue to see him probably doing uh, similar things in the future. Moving on to number six, Darren Waller. Another one of these waiver wire studs thus far this season. You know, Darren Waller, um, he's pretty much picked up where Jared Cook left off, and even more, even though I, I think that you know, Darren Waller not being able to get into the end zone thus far this season is a struggle. Excuse me, where the heck is Darren Waller? Yeah, uh, not being able to get into the end zone thus far this season is a struggle for him. Uh, and obviously, it does not help him, but these his target counts, guys. Eight targets, seven targets, 14 targets, eight targets. He is consistently being looked at by Derek Carr. Um, outside of Tyrell Williams, really, there isn't anything else. It's perfect. It's similar to the Evan Ingram situation where... You know, your quarterback needs to find a safety blanket and is finding Darren Waller um, in this offense, which has been really good in fantasy. Against the Bears this week, the Bears defense is tough, but I do believe that Darren Waller could put something together uh, in terms of everybody else is being locked up. Darren Waller is the only one getting targets, finds himself with, you know, another 10 target game, eight receptions, you know, 60 some odd yards. He puts together a 10 point fantasy week easily. Um, against the Bears defense. So that's why I have him at my number six. Moving on. Number seven, George Kittle, the thumbnail. George Kittle has been extremely underwhelming. Uh, he's been consistent, but consistent in the in the idea that he, he's been consistently underneath double-digit fantasy points. Um, a lot of George Kittle's 
boom of last year, his excitement was the big playability. Being able to catch a slant and go 70 some odd yards because of his top speed, being able to run over defenders, make huge plays, continue to you know move his feet, get into the end zone. We have yet to see anything of that sort thus far this season. To be honest, uh, where is Mr. Kittle on this list? I gotta look at how many targets he's been getting in the last couple. Where the heck is I know Kittle didn't play last week. In terms of targets, 10 in week one, which was great, had a couple touchdowns called back. That makes a huge difference. This and then the week two against Cincinnati. Great matchup. Only had three targets, three receptions, because they really didn't need to pass the ball for the rest of that game. It became game script dependent on just running out the clock. And that's what they did with their three running backs. And then in week three against Pittsburgh, eight uh, eight targets, six receptions, 57 yards. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what you want to see. But we want that extra touchdown. Those are similar numbers to a guy like Will Disley. But George Kittle is not being given that extra boost in the red zone to help him be fantasy relevant at the moment in time that's why i have him at number seven that's not to say that he is not a top you know tight end in the national football league we saw that what he was capable of last year and we really do know that george kittle is one of the best tight ends at the uh, in the game so going forward even though he is such a good blocking um as you know aspect for this team he is used as somewhat as a fullback like he, he's really balling out uh, in the run blocking game but um, hopefully they can continue to use him as a receiving threat. They have yet to establish a real number one wide receiver, and I really do believe that needs to be George Kittle moving forward. Hopefully um, after this bye week, um, you know Kyle Shanahan can kind of reevaluate everything and really feed Kittle the ball going forward. All right, moving on to number eight, Austin Hooper. Here's the thing about Hooper. Like I mentioned earlier, he's the number two tight end in fantasy thus far. Looking at his target counts, 9, 6, 7, 11. That is disgusting. I mean, 77 yards, 34 yards, 66 yards and two touchdowns, 130 yards this past week against the Titans. Wow, right? What is George Kittle? I mean, what is Austin Hooper doing? And why isn't George Kittle doing that? A lot of it has to do with target counts. A lot of it has to do with the efficiency of Austin Hooper. If you guys don't remember, Austin Hooper was the number six tight end by the end of last season. Yeah, he put together a couple of these performances, but he has been so hyper-efficient this year, and I do attribute that to Dirk Cutter. Uh, For those of you who had the 2019 Fantasy Football Draft Kit that I made, I really highlighted in Austin Hooper's page that Dirk Cutter loves to feed the tight end the ball in his offenses. We saw that very much so with O.J. Howard and Cameron Bright the year prior that he coached. He was the head coach of the Buccaneers. And we also saw that when Dirk Cutter was the offensive coordinator of the Falcons in 2013, uh, 2012 and 13, he fed Tony Gonzalez the ball over 100 times that year. There's a possibility that Austin Hooper can be that for this team. It's insane to think that Austin Hooper could be that potential uh, threat in this offense but hey he's putting it together 33 targets in four games um two touchdowns surpassed 100 receiving yards last week in a matchup in which it just really they they could not move the ball uh he's hyper efficient last season i think he had the second highest uh catch rate only behind michael thomas there's a lot of things about austin hooper that are exciting i have him at eight because i'm just worried and to be honest i just like the other guys more that's not to say Austin Hooper shouldn't start. He honestly, if you have two of these tight ends, if you have Hooper and Disley, you start Hooper at the flex maybe because it's going to be a shootout and he's getting targeted so heavily. Just my thought process. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about number nine, Eric Ebron. Again, speaking of shootouts between the Indianapolis Colts and the Kansas City Chiefs this week, should be a shootout. Eric Ebron is going to con- you know, contribute in this offense heavily with, if in fact T.Y. Hilton remains out. Here's the thing. Eric Ebron last week dropped three passes, and if in fact didn't catch that last pass for the 47-yard touchdown in garbage time, he wouldn't have had himself a good week. But he saved, he salvaged the week with one play. Perfectly fine. We're okay with this. He's going to continue to see targets. The issue is if Jack Doyle, Mo Ali Cox take targets away from him, that could make a difference. But I really do believe Eric Ebron is a is a pretty um, versatile receiving option doesn't really get looked at as a tight end in this offense really is a is a receiver doesn't really block either so Eric Ebron is my number nine on the week in a high scoring matchup potentially uh, I like it a lot 
All right, moving on to number 10, Greg Olson, a guy that has been utilized pretty heavily in this offense. This past week really didn't get anything going. Uh, target counts took a huge dip from the weeks prior, uh, especially with Kyle Allen the week prior. Against the Cardinals, it was just free pickings, but the past week against the, um, against the Texans just wasn't easy. I think going forward, Greg Olson playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars um, should be fine. I think Kyle Allen will improve um, as long as he can hold on to the ball and stop fumbling because he's fumbled, what, four times in the last three, two games? As long as he stops fumbling the ball, Greg Olson will have more opportunities in this offense. Uh, you know, the defense won't be on the field as often, and uh, I think it'll present some more value. This guy has stayed healthy all season long, has seen a pretty decent amount of targets, and when you target this guy enough, um, he, he's going to find himself open, and I do think Greg Olson's a good option. Moving on to number 11, Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker plays against the Titans. We saw what Austin Hooper was able to do against, uh, excuse me, not playing against the Titans. He's playing against the Buffalo Bills. Excuse me. Retract that statement. Uh, Delaney Walker is on the Titans. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Delaney Walker plays against the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills, in the matchups list, gave up the least amount of points to opposing tight ends, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go and look that up, shall we? The Buffalo Bills give up the least amount of points on a weekly basis to opposing tight ends in half point PPR. What is that? 3.4 fantasy points per week? That is nothing. But I still do believe in Delaney Walker this week. Let me tell you why. If, in fact, this Buffalo Bills defense, because we know they're no joke, their secondary is pretty stacked. They made Brady struggle heavily. They've made every opposing quarterback struggle thus far this season. The thing is, if, in fact, Marcus Mariota is going to struggle, he's going to run the ball heavily, they're going to use play action, and they're going to feed Delaney Walker rather than guys like Corey Davis or A.J. Brown because that is going to be a far more difficult task to accomplish. I do think Delaney Walker this week is more reliable we've seen his rapport with Mariota and I do think that is a safer option than a lot of these other guys that are below him therefore he is at my number 11 moving on to my number 12 the last guy on my top 12 list Jimmy Graham Jimmy Graham needs to step up in this matchup I really do think that he has a very good opportunity with Devontae Adams out of this lineup especially in the red zone if he ends up being that red zone target for them um you know The biggest issue has been the presence of Mercedes Lewis. I can't believe Mercedes Lewis is still playing in the league, but him taking away a couple snaps here and there, a couple targets here and there, it doesn't help Jimmy Graham. But as long as Jimmy Graham can stay on pace, see himself seven, eight, or nine targets a week, um, he can be a relevant tight end. As long as he sees that work in the red zone, that is what has made Jimmy Graham so valuable in the past. When we go back to years with the Seattle Seahawks, Jimmy Graham in 2017 was the most targeted receiving option in the red zone that season because of Russell Wilson. Hopefully they can try to get back on track. There's a reason they brought him into this organization to be a threat in the red zone. And that's what we need to see Jimmy Graham continue to be. Other than that, we know Tyler Eifert's there. We know he has a great matchup. Those are my top 12 rankings on week five um, for the tight end position. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for helping us get to that 10,000 subscriber mark. I really do appreciate it. Next time I see you guys will be Friday for Hidden Gems, and then we'll have the Sunday morning live stream before kickoff. Thank you guys again, and until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.